Hello and welcome to this Bitwig practice session. In this episode, I talk about audio routing in Bitwig, especially for collaborations and for some other situations where you can need it or where you can start to use it for some reasons. But let's get started. Okay. Um, there's a reason why I searched for the um, for a way to um, level my, for example, the the volume of my headphones in a in a different way than than I normally do with like a master fade or something like that. And um, one of the reasons is um, when I when I collaborate or when I jam with other persons, I normally use a software that is called Sonobus, something like this here. This is a free and open source software for Linux, Windows, and uh, Mac. Uh, a peer-to-peer -peer software that is available as a VST or standalone um, software. And um, normally you connect the Sonobus as a VST in your master track or a standalone. And then you send your output from Bitwig, for example, in the Sonobus and then to um, to the other person or to, to the whole group. And um, one thing you don't want, want to do is to change your output level while playing. And um, But sometimes um, you don't want to listen that loud or that, uh, that silent. So now you... You could you could use a lot of those um, volume faders in your in your system in your operating system in your DAW in Bitwig in on the on the several buses on your audio interface and on the um, headphone amplifier. There are a lot of uh, volume faders and knobs and, and something, but um, there's one drawback because normally if you produce on a regular basis and you want to compare your own tracks from one day to the other, you should always have the same um, volume level um, because as we know, um, louder is perceived always as better, even if it's not, but this is a psychoacoustic thing. So um, I wanted to have all my uh, loudness faders or uh, volume faders always the same level from my system, from my operating system to the DAW, to the uh, audio interface and to the um, headphone amplifier. So that I never touch these these knobs or always have them in the same position and not to wriggle around and turn it back like maybe it was there around like that um, this is um, never always very precise and um, so I decided to search um, um, a solution in Bitwig and I have one and this looks like um, that let me just show you an example how I want to do the routing <laughs> looks a little bit chaotic but uh, this is my audio routing and there is something this is not that one this we don't need but we need where is it we need Sonobus here is Sonobus this one I want to use and everything else we can for forget we don't need to look at okay this is the audio routing i want to do so there's bitwig studio that has its default output buses buses um, i will show you how to create that if they are not available and where they are and i want to route out my uh, headphones to the audio interface the hardware playback and the speaker output to sonobus or and Sonobus could be a jamming session or a collaboration, coaching session, what else? So this is the easy overview of what I want to do. Two outputs, one goes out somewhere to someone and one goes to my headphones. Okay. And Bitwig has in its um, audio settings, settings and audio. Um, they have your driver and below there you have your output buses over here and these output buses are normally called speakers and headphones if there's just only one and create another uh, stereotype 
uh, stereo pair, sorry. <laughs> and the speakers, there are predefined groups like spe output speakers and headphones. The speakers you send to speakers and your headphones you send to headphones. Um, as a default, I don't connect my speakers to something because that's um, then connected to Sonobus or something else. And my headphones are connected directly to my outputs uh, from my audio interface. This is playback one and playback two, like uh, uh, um, left and right. And this is my configuration in in the Bitwig settings. So there's one precondition that, that this is working for this one way how to do it. And this one way how to do it is something I I normally do anyway because in my arrangement um, I group all my tracks not in a flat way I group them in subgroups and every track is grouped or is summed up in one track that is called tracked or pre-master here so every single track if audio or um, <laughs> industrial instru instrument track or effect track like this one here is everything in this group um, track pre-master. So every track is summing up in this pre-master track. And this pre-master track is like a bit of standard going to the master track like this here. I switch to the um, to the clip view like this because there you have a vertical um, view. Maybe this is more logical to you. If I um, open this, you see all the different tracks in here and maybe so there are only the the groups for example and every group is going to the track pre-master in here and the track pre-master is going to the master track so this is the standard um, behavior of Bitwig so everything that is sent to uh, from your tracks to master is going out and the master is sending that to studio and now I have to um, deactivate my cam for a minute. Like, I can't find my cam. Where's my cam? There's my cam. And on the bottom right of Bitwig, uh, here in this, in this area below here, there's one icon that is called Studio I Panel. You can see that in here status information studio io panel if i click in here you see above here studio io so this master track is going to studio io like this and there's speakers and there's headphones and as you can see there is studio IO, speakers and headphones both output buses are active because they are orange i can click on it they are deactivated click again and they are activated so at the moment, everything that I produce in my arrangement that goes into track pre-master is going to the master track and the master track is sending that out to the studio. If I click on that, I see it again in the inspector here on the left side. The studio, it's going to studio and studio is the, is the, um, um, let's say uh, a layer above speakers and headphones and everything that comes into studio will be sent to speakers and headphones. But I want to separate this outputs so um, that I can say uh, something that goes out to my headphones. I want to manipulate in with a volume fader and that was what uh, would have to be sent out to someone else that um, should go out like it, it is for example. So what I right now do is I change the master output, what is actually studio, see it here studio and here studio. I change this to speakers because I want to send my speakers to Sonobus and my headphones to my audio interface. So now the master is sending to speakers and you should hear if I start playing the song you should hear it but I don't hear it anymore. So demonstrating that is maybe not that uh, 
wouldn't wouldn't show you the <laughs> something that you really could uh, use at the moment because you're always hearing something because I sent you something to your speakers. But I could change this. Let me change this if I uh, just um, turn this around so that the that the output of Bitwig that goes at the moment to to OBS in here, I click that away and connect this to my headphones. So now you get everything what I hear on my headphones. So speakers go out somewhere and, you, had, and you, you hear the headphones from from what I'm sending out. Okay, so master is going to speakers and if I play this song right now, you see something is going on here, but you don't hear anything. It looks nice, but no sound. So now, and I want to hear something right now. So um, my track is going still to master, that's okay. But now I add to this master track, I add an effect track like this. And I call this effect track the listen track, for example. And this listen track is a is a, um, a send an effect track, an aux track. And this listen track is configured to with the stereo in. I um, put that on no input. And the output of this listen track I put to headphones. So and uh, since this is a effect track or send track or aux track there is a send knob here on my track premaster and if i put that on 100 percent or uh, zero db everything that comes in here will be sent like like you would send uh, something to an effect track like in reverb or in delay this is sent to this listen track i turn that down again start the track again and as i so, uh, turn this knob on, you will hear the sound. That's the whole trick. And the nice trick on that is I, I could um, just change here the volume. I don't have to change it here. I could, but I couldn't change it here. So when it plays, I put that down. I can change here the volume. Everybody else in my jam session has always the same output and um, nothing is changed. And um, if I export this file, I don't have to look if my master is in a, is in a way uh, changed. So I have a put it back to, back to default. So I can let this here, I can put it back on, on default. And the nice thing I can put in here, like the default is like um, zero dB. Is it zero dB? Yeah, it's zero dB. I can put it down or anything. So I always can dial in the number, which, which number I normally use. Uh, oops, not 10, sorry, zero. And I could use it as well as, um, for example, like silent listening. When I when I mix, sometimes I put that on a very very low volume um, to have a better overview how the um, volume balance of of all tracks uh, uh, tracks is. So that's that's what I'm doing. Just to sum it up in, in a short explanation, I. I organize all my tracks in in uh, groups and subgroups and all tracks are summing up in one group track. This group track is sent out to the master and I switch back to clip again. So this is sent to master. Master is sent to um, a specific output like speakers and then add an effect track and this uh, effect track is um, is uh, filled with the sound or the track premaster sends its sound with the send knob 
like you would no normally do with an um, effect track or like a reverb or something like that. And in your, in your Bitwig settings, in your Bitwig settings, you configure in your audio settings the, these output, output buses with speakers and here the right channel and the right um, outputs where you want to send it. And that's everything you have to do. And then you're very flexible. And there's one little thing, a little extra. So if you're jamming in a, in a session or something and you want to load a new sound, but you don't know which sound and you want to listen to some presets while everybody is jamming, it's a little bit disturbing when you just put your sounds in there and like play something and every, everybody else hear you um, searching for sound or for, for some notes or a scale or something. You just could add here a, a, another channel, like an instrument channel. If I just use here, for example, polysynth or something. And this polysynth is outside your tracks. So this is not automatically this. Hmm. You can configure this, that it, this is not automatically sent to your master. So you could send this to none and put this in your listen track. So only you, um, so only you um, are able to listen to this track here right now. As you see, if I play, this is only going to the listen track to my headphones, but not outside. So you can just make wild things, prepare wild things. Nobody is hearing it until you could just put that here inside or maybe like do like that and put it in here, for example, and that's your polysynth and then put that back because um, if you don't put it back, you send the, uh, the signal twice into the effect track. So it's twice loud. And this would be a little bit difficult to mix for the others. Uh, and then you can just prepare while you are playing. So that's everything. I hope you liked it. And um, leave, please leave me a comment to support the algorithm, <laughs> support my channel. It would be very nice if you support with a comment my channel. This is very nice. And uh, leave me a like if you like. Um, and uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, share my videos if you like as well and uh, yeah stay healthy i hope you uh, i hope i see you soon again see you bye bye